The police body camps is sold as the solution to police violence. Has police violence ended across America with more body cams? Has this solved the problem? Well, here's a lot of information about why that is. And this guy has done great uh, journalistic work. He is on Twitter. His Twitter handle is Equality Alec, A-L-E-C. Anyway, he says, I didn't fully know what to expect when I started digging into over a decade of record statements, financial data, and other information about police body cams. I suspected it to be troubling, but what I found shocked me. He says the public campaign to sell body cams as a liberal reform, right? This was even liberals came along with this is going to, this is what will fix it. This will make the police better. As a liberal reform is one of the great frauds of modern domestic U.S. propaganda. It carries profound lessons for anyone who cares about democracy. First, a fact many people don't know, is that police and prosecutors wanted body cams in most areas. You know, I, I try and teach people uh, uh, media literacy, you know, how to predict the events as well as I do. I am able to predict a lot of times the, you know, uh, events that are going to happen sometimes or uh, the reality of the events, you know, when you uh, China spy balloon and I can say on day one, not a spy balloon. And then what do you know? Later, the Pentagon says, ah, uh, turns out not a spy balloon. Those type of things. How am I able to do so much predicting that ends up being accurate about 99% of the time? Well, one of the ways is look for who supports these changes. If the police want the change that you're pushing as police accountability, then it ain't much of a change. Okay. If the police support it, that's a problem. That's a red flag that this is not what you think it is. Uh, another example, a uh, similar example is Paris Climate Accords. When they were signing that, liberals across America were celebrating. Uh, hell, even I didn't celebrate, but even I was like, was like, well, maybe it'll do something. But I did point out the fact that even big oil companies and big banks, maybe not all of them, but some of them, we're saying the Paris Climate Accords is great. It's a good, it's a good change. We need to create change. It's a good change. And that should be a red flag right there, that the Paris Climate Accords was meaningless. And it's turned out to be borderline meaningless. If the big oil and big banks, the people who are, will be harmed most if fossil fuels stop, if fossil fuels stop being used, then if they're celebrating that Paris Climate Accords ain't worth the turd it was written on. Uh, I did, by the way. I, that actually was not a joke. I did hear that it was uh, written on turds. Uh, so I don't know if it was a paper shortage thing or it was, uh, you know, something that they felt had meaning to them. Uh, what, whatever the reasoning behind it, I, I did hear that it's written out on, on uh, actual turds. Police and prosecutors wanted the body cams. After the killing of Michael Brown and Ferguson 10 years ago generated massive public outrage poli about police violence, police and multi-billion dollar surveillance companies realized they had an opportunity. They realized that while they'd been unable to get local governments to pay billions for the surveillance bonanza before, now they could partner with reformers to pitch body cameras as a solution to police violence. Liberal reformers were a perfect target as an accomplice. Need a little reminder, maybe. The U.S. has a one of the largest, if not the largest, police force in the world. We also have the largest prison state in the world, both per capita and per sheer number. So we are not the land of the free. In fact, if you look at us compared to other countries, we are the least land of the free. We have the most people locked up by our police forces. And these police forces wanted more surveillance. They want to see your face as much as possible. They want to have you on video doing anything and everything. And it used to be in this country, we would go, that's a violation of my privacy. But fewer and fewer people are saying that. And anyway, the police wanted more surveillance, but they weren't given the money to have such massive surveillance until the body camera solution, quote unquote, came along. And all of a sudden, liberals across America, uh, along with plenty of centrists, plenty of uh, right wingers, I guess, but jumped up and down and said, this is the answer. The money started flowing. President Obama called for hundreds of millions in cash from the feds to supplement local and state spending, which liberal leaders and cops championed. The market value of the main companies grew by billions with exploding yearly sales. So it just shot through the roof. I mean, 2015, you're down at about 
30 uh, million dollars spent on body camera sales by uh 2019 2020 you're at nearly 200 million dollars on body cam almost every news article published for the following decade omitted something crucial. Police and prosecutors wanted the cameras, not because it would make them accountable and transparent, but for exactly the opposite reason. Police and their industry allies used the news media to focus the public on the supposed need to capture police violence on video. They said police lacking lacked funding for tech that could provide the public with accountability and transparency. Transparency. In reality, according to their own statements, they sought the greatest expansion of surveillance infrastructure in modern policing history and dreamed of lucrative contracts to link the new video with AI facial and voice recognition software and predictive policing algorithms. For example, they wanted an easy tool that cops could deploy at protests to scan the crowd and know who was there with facial recognition. They wanted to be able to share this intelligence about protesters in massive profitable databases. Cops and prosecutors also wanted them because it's the most powerful new form of evidence, outward looking videos that bureaucrats could create, direct, curate, edit, and control both in terms of what's captured, what's left out, and at which political moment it's publicly released. So this is a key point. Uh, I think a lot of people, they hear about body cameras and they go, well, even if they wanted them, even if cops wanted them, if you have a video of what's going on, that's still good. That's good for the victims. That's good uh, of police violence. That's good for, for the reality, actually knowing the reality of what happened. And you would think that's true. But here's the problem. If you have police cameras that no one can see unless it's chosen to be released by either the state, the city, or the police departments, and it varies state to state as to who makes that call, if you don't get to see it, unless the state or the cops decide it's time for you to see it, then it's borderline meaningless. It's borderline meaningless. The cops are not going to reveal things that are bad for them. They're only going to use that footage when it's useful to their side of the argument, to their cause. That's when you're going to get that footage. And we've seen this again and again and again. And uh, a great example is... George Floyd, all right? George Floyd, executed on camera by the police, by the cops, and it, it caused outrage across the country, obviously, sparked uh, Black Lives Matter. The video that sparked the outrage that got everyone so furious did not come from a body cam. The video that got the ball rolling and uh, caused outrage around the world was from uh, bystanders with their cell phones videotaping it. The body cam footage from the uh, officer that executed George Floyd didn't come out for a while afterwards. And in fact, he had that, that same cop killed or almost killed several previous people, victims of his, uh, with the same move, the kneeing on their throat. And there was body of camera footage of that, but we didn't get it for years. For years, we did not get this other evidence of this same cop, Derek Chauvin, executing people uh, or, or attempted executions. That body camera footage is useless, it, at least in the case of George Floyd when he was being prosecuted for that. It was useless unless you're going to release it, unless you're going to use it. And also, of course, there's the fact that these are outward facing videos. So you're not seeing what the cop's doing uh, most of the time unless you get an angle from another police officer. There's also the fact that when that cop knows he's about to do something illegal, such as shoot someone or uh, abuse someone, they, most of them flick the cameras off. Now, some of the cameras in certain areas, they are the cop can't turn it off, but many of them they can. To continue, body camera videos are now routinely used in almost every prosecutor office in the U.S. as evidence to get mostly poor people to quickly plead guilty to things like drug possession and trespassing. They are almost never used against police officers. They're almost never used against the fascist abusers. The United States, the, the an average year is 1,200 people murdered by police. But it's actually much larger than that because the Lancet Medical Journal has shown that it's perhaps double that number. It varies year to year a little, but it double that number because most murders by police do not go down as murders by police. 
they are written down as as asphyxiation or a suspect, you know, had a heart attack or what have you. So most of the executions by police are not written down as executions by police. And then even though we ignore half of them, you still have 1,200 a year, sometimes more, by police. Compare that to other countries. And I know some other countries are much smaller in terms of population, but still, even considering that, it's insane, okay? Denmark and Switzerland often have years with zero, zero people murdered by their police. You'd think they'd just murder a few accidentally here and there. You'd think they'd murder a few just to stay in practice. Zero often. In Iceland, since the, 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 the founding of the country, they have had one murder by police. You know, German cops are not known for being cool. They're not known for being the Icelandish cops, but the average is like seven. It's like a, a rounding error. In the US, it's 1,200 if you don't have, count half of them. So it's really 2,400. The videos are often given privately to cops prior to their internal statements about controversial incidents in which they used violence to create and standardize initial police narratives with the goal of reducing potential civil and criminal liability. The benefits of body cameras to the punishment bureaucracy and big corporations unfolded exactly as police chiefs and corporate sales representatives from the companies discussed the devices over a decade before. They, it, 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 meaning it, they got to use them for exactly what they wanted to. Most profoundly, though, body cameras served as a propaganda function. They steer the public away from actual, real, systemic changes to the police force. Rather than changing the way that policing works in America, let's just pu put a camera on their chest. It, it worked brilliantly, right? The, the big reform that we won across America was getting a camera on the chest of many cops rather than actual systemic change that could have a actual significant change in the way policing works across America. But no, we'll just take a camera on there and we'll let them control the footage and whether they ever show it to anyone. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this update on how well body cameras are changing American policing.